Hello, I'm Martin Fenska and welcome to the first episode of another of my Civilization V Vox Populi series. So as usual, because this is the first episode, it's more like an introduction. We'll go over the mods that we're going to be using, we'll check the map settings, and then I will show you three different starting locations. And you will have three, uh, you will have 24 hours to decide which of them we're going to be using for this series. Also, with the release of the second episode, I will make these three initial save files available for you guys. So if you want to play with me, uh, you'll be able to do so. Just make sure you are using the same versions of both mods. Uh, we will be playing with the Vox Populi full package, the latest version. I think it's from 3rd of September, if I remember correctly. And then also the latest version of the 3rd and 4th unique component. There will be links in the description for both of them. So you'll be able to easily download the correct versions through that. Okay, now uh, the map settings, we're going to be playing as uh, Askia, uh, so we'll go through all the unique abilities in a minute. The map itself is going to be continents plus large map. Uh, everything else is pretty much pretty much as standard as possible. Uh, the usual settings that I'm using, uh, I didn't change anything here. Uh, 20 city states, which is normal for a large map, and here no events, no. Uh, tech trading, tech brokering, no research agreements, uh, raging barbarians, transparent diplomacy. As I said, pretty much the most standard settings that uh, I can go with. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous about the large map, but hopefully because I want to go for domination game. In the late game, there won't be too many AIs left on the map, so there won't be too many units running around making the game unstable. But I did have some issues with larger maps in the past, so yeah, as I said, I'm a little bit nervous, but hopefully everything will be fine. Uh, because I want to go a domination game, I didn't handpick anything any uh, opponents so it's possible that we get saves like Korea and here probably Korea is the save that I'm most nervous about we had problems with Korea last time uh, we are going domination but it's continent so it's possible that we get Korea somewhere uh, far away from us on a different continent and uh, she'll be able to snowball out of control but yeah, as domination, I feel like I have more tools to do something about it. So we will see what happens. I mean, worst case scenario, we restart and just ban Korea from the game. I'm not sure if they actually nerfed Korea or adjusted Korea uh, during the last like two or three patches that we missed. Uh, I don't think so. I don't remember seeing anything, but maybe I just don't remember or they did, I didn't notice. Well, we will find out. So that's the map settings, and now I guess we can just load into the game and check the starting location. So that's the first one. I hope the loading won't take too long, even though it's a large map. But well, we can use the time to talk about Askia. So our unique ability is a river warlord. Triple gold from pillaging encampment and cities, especially the first part is really important. We can get a lot of gold early. So we'll focus on that as much as possible and try to get a head start thanks to the extra gold that we get there. Land units gain the war canoe uh, and amphibious promotions and move along rivers as if they were roads. So that's a lot of extra mobility that we can get if we get the right terrain uh, around us. And the rivers create city connections, which is pretty important as well but we will of course try to adjust our uh, like city locations accordingly and get as much as possible out of our unique ability then we have uh, two unique units so let's start with the uh, mandeco cavalry which replaces a knight powerful medieval mounted unit weak to pikemen only the songhai may build it this unit is not penalized when attacking cities unlike the knight which it replaces and starts with the raider promotion so when you get the uh, when you get mounted units that are effective at attacking cities it's 
always great. So we will try to take advantage of them uh, and we will focus on uh, cavalry as much as possible. So this will hopefully also help us on the larger map that we'll have faster units. Uh, so that's one thing. Then we have um, Sofa, uh, which is um, uh, a crossbowman replacement. I'm really curious about this one. I don't think I have ever seen this unit. I've never played against it. I've never played with it. So as I said, crossbowman replacement. Range unit excelling at supporting your cavalry. Only the Sunhai may build it cheaper and available earlier than crossbowmen. That is scary. Like crossbowmen are a huge upgrade when you get to them. And when you can get them earlier or their equivalent, holy crap, that that that's a power spike that's as I said, that is scary. Like I, I'm always trying to rush crossbows because they make me feel so much safer, so much stronger. And when I can get them earlier, I'm really looking forward to testing this unit. This could be like a hidden gem because... Or also depends how early we get them. I actually didn't check that. Uh, so we'll check that as probably the first thing when we get into the game. How early we can get them. But yeah, this definitely could be something. Uh, earlier than Cosmoman, and all mounted units within two tiles receive a combat boost starts at Medic 1 promotion. So you not only get them first, they even get something extra on top of the fact that they come into play earlier. Uh, yeah, as I said, once again, I'm really looking forward to uh, playing with these guys. <clears throat> it's going to be a weird composition, uh, having... Uh, cavalry with range units running behind them trying to support them we'll see how that works then we have two unique buildings the tabia which is a replacement for stoneworks and i didn't notice anywhere anything about the building not requiring uh marble stone salt or jade uh let's go through the description again Grants plus one production to all river tiles near the city and 10% production when constructing buildings in the city. That's a lot potentially. That's a really, really strong boost, especially because you can get the building very early. Allows production to be moved from this city along trade routes inside your civilization. Not that important. Uh, but does this need stone marble salt or jade the same way uh stoneworks do or uh can this be built anywhere without the without the resources nearby i'm really not sure about this if it can be built anywhere then it's almost almost feels like it's broken because the amount of production is that's that's a lot uh if we need the resources then eh, hopefully we get lucky with stone and uh, get the ability to build this in the capital um if we don't get this in the capital then that's gonna be quite unfortunate we're gonna be losing quite a lot but well what what can you do and somehow i feel like we will be able to build this anywhere even without the resources because it would be weird for the unique building to fully depend on just rng where the stone is generated and then we have something called game i have no idea if i'm pronouncing that correctly most likely i'm not it's a replacement for a caravansary when a land trade route originating here and targeting another sieve is completed, receive a tourism boost with the sieve based on the recent culture and tourism output. Don't care about that at all. Plus one food and gold for every three desert and tundra tiles worked by the city. Uh, we probably won't be playing anywhere around tundra. There is one starting location that is in the desert, so that potentially could be some, well, something. Could give us a little bit because it's for three tiles. Uh, eh. We would get a little bit of food, a little bit of gold, but it's not really that that important. Uh, and merchant specialist in the city gain plus one gold. Also, like nothing special, really. I don't, I don't know what to think about this building. There is nothing that would really. 
make this interesting in any way. At least not for we, what we are trying to do. Land trade routes gain 75% range and plus 3 gold. Incoming trade routes generate plus 2 gold for the city and the trade route owner. Plus 2 gold and production and culture if a trade route unit passes through the city. That's potentially interesting, but um, it's not something that would affect your decisions about trade routes too much so it's just nice that it will happen here and there we will get some extra yields but we can't really affect that too much so okay it's there i will try to remember maybe it will be relevant at some point but overall it's probably just gonna be some extra random yields that we get here and there if the trade routes go the like through the right tile okay so that's our unique abilities uh, now we can uh, open the map so the first one this is probably like the most standard uh, starting location for me this is the kind of uh, starting location that i really like that i prefer so here uh, we would most likely be starting on this hill uh, I've already checked that I moved uh, I, or I made the first three moves so I know that there is one extra sugar here I think I moved the warrior this way there is another sugar down here so sugar would be our monopoly uh, so extra food yeah it's a pretty damn strong start here um, <clears throat> And on the other side, I moved this way. There is another sugar. So, so we are at this point, we are already missing only one sugar for the monopoly. And uh, the last move, I think, was this this way. There is nothing interesting there. I think this might be the strongest location, the location, uh, the start that I like the most because of how strong it is. Um, we have a river. I think all three starts have a river because um, I wanted to have a river start as Askia. Um, other than that, there is a good chance that we get horses around here. Not sure about stone. But I, I'm not sure if there is anything that would like help you guess if you get stone around the city or not. I don't think so. With like sheep, horses, bison, these resources, you can guess based on the tiles that you have around. Uh, like what is the chance that you get one of them? With stone, I don't think there is anything that would that would help you guess uh, if there is any. So this is the first start. Then the second one, this should be the desert start. <clears throat> come on, come on. No, it's not too bad. So this one is interesting. Quite unusual. Uh, it's it's not bad like I like I mean there is a lot of food there is decent production uh, we have two oases potentially if we settle on the spot although I think here I would settle on the hill I really like to have the extra production uh, from settling on the hill we can go let's go this way uh, let's go uh, there is a forest, so there's probably going to be a large forest down here. So I'll go there. And um, this is probably where we would start. So there is another oasis there. The monopoly would be Lapis here. So extra golden ages, which is not that great. The monopoly is definitely weaker than the previous one. But as I said, there is a ton of food. Once we get farms everywhere, these tiles going to be crazy. Um, production, production, well, actually there isn't that much production now when I'm looking at it. Uh, there are these two hills, third hill, one, two, three, there's another hill and that's where it ends. So it's not that much. We could get some production from the forest. 
But there is a river, so... And also, is it Jade? Actually, let me check our... Our... Uh, where is it? Technologies. Our unique building... Uh, I can't see it. Oh, there. Jade. So we do have Jade in range, so we will definitely be able to build uh, the, the unique building here. So all these tiles will have extra production. So that will compensate uh, for the overall like lower production around here. And I wanted to check our unique crossbows. Is it? No. Here, with chivalry. Hmm. Oh, they really come into play with the same tag as Mandeka Lukad. I mean, it makes sense. They are basically meant as a support for the cab, but it just feels too strong to get both of them from one tag because this is a ridiculous power spike. You get them. Uh, if you want to run. Crossbows uh, come from machinery, usually. No, not usually, but they're. They come with machinery. Uh, so if you wanted to rush crossbows, um, you would get one of these, and then you would have to get two more tags to get the crossbow. So technically, they're like two tags faster than, than crossbowmen. And the fact that they're on the same tag as the Mandekal cover means that you just go go chivalry as quickly as possible and just crush everyone in medieval era. We get uh, the Game along the way. And of course, technically this is along the way as well, but it's so much earlier that it doesn't really matter where it is. Um, so yeah, chivalry means that we get everything, all of our unique stuff very early. Just have to make sure that we basically have our army prepared before we hit chivalry, that we have enough money to get those upgrades, and then we, if, if we somehow pull that off, then we can really crush everyone so quickly. Wow, I expected the, the the sofa to be here in the steel, but definitely not uh, as part of chivalry. It just almost seems like too strong. But well, we'll see. Maybe they're not that strong. Who knows? Um, so that's the second story. And then the third one. I think the third one is weakest. But it's definitely not bad. As you can see, we have salt, which if I remember correctly, again, uh, is required for our unique building. So that again guarantees that we will be able to build our unique building. Uh, we won't get as many tile or we won't have as many tiles that we get bonus uh, from, from the building because we have some mountains here, but this will make uh, our capital much easier to defend from basically southwest and southwest would be almost impossible uh, to attack our capital. The lake here will also make it difficult to attack from the east and there is some rough terrain to the north. So like this is by far the easiest location to defend. Um, the question is how the terrain looks like farther away so let's check that out so salt looks like to be our monopoly we can jump jump on the hill here um actually we are moving faster along the river so it's better to go this way oh well never mind 
and um, uh, you definitely settle on the uh, on the river here. It's the slowest start because we don't get any three food tiles right next to us. But then there is the lake, and then there is the the chocolate. So once we get these two tiles, we'll again start growing pretty quickly. Uh, triple salt in vision, so we are missing two for the monopoly. It gives food, so we should be able to catch up thanks to that uh, later. So yeah, it's so. It is probably the weakest start because we don't get the three, those three food tiles immediately, but it's not weak overall. Uh, it's also pretty good. And I was looking for a decent starting locations. We are playing on a larger map, so we don't really want to fall behind uh, early because then the AIs would just settle everywhere and it would be a huge pain in the ass, uh, especially if we get some strong AIs on the map. So yeah, that's probably all for this for this episode. As I said, you have 24 hours to decide which of, uh, uh, or on which uh, or with which uh, starting location we're gonna be playing and uh, yeah as usual i hope that you uh like this episode i hope that you're gonna join me for the next one again and until then have a good time bye bye